I'd like to now introduce Jade Jansen, another great example of young people going above and beyond to make an environmental difference. Jade is going to talk to us about what happens when a simple or maybe not so simple school project evolves into a passion. And uh, it's pretty cool to think that Jade founded Lives with Less Plastic in 2018, uh, well, in grade seven, so what does that put her? Maybe 13? What were you doing at 13? Uh, were you finding organizations <laughs> and, <laughs> to improve the world? So please, a warm, warm welcome for Jade Jansen. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, even though Rotary did their own land acknowledgement, I would like to do my own personal land acknowledgement. I was born in Mokinstis, Calgary, and have lived in Cochrane my entire life with my parents, Jennifer and Andrew, my sister, Brooke, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Since a very young age, I've been connected to the environment and has been the center of my life for as long as I can remember. It's very important for me to take care of a land and be an environmental steward to the land I live on every day. In the spirit of reconciliation, I acknowledge that I educate, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Eahe Nakoda Nations, Bearspaw, Weasley, Chiniki, the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Pekani, Kaina, the Sutina part of the Diné people, Tunaha, Shwatma, Mountain Cree, MAT Region 3 in Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta, Canada. I would also like to acknowledge that some of our other group members live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Métis, Region 4, and Treaty 6 lands. Please take a moment to do your own personal land acknowledgement of what living on the land means to you. All right, so at a very young age, I realized I was never going to go to the Olympics. So I know that's like, it's a big thing, right? Um, and I've been involved in sport my entire life, but I was like, no one's gonna know my name from the Olympics. And that's okay, like I, I accepted that. But I did wanna make my impact on the world in some other way. And starting when I was lit little, all these moments of the environment have created who I am today. So as you can see in this picture, I'm eating some grass. Um, I was very connected to the environment since a very young age. And the environment has been part of my entire life. I learned the word recycling before I learned the word garbage. Um, I picked up stuff off the kitchen ground and asked my mother if it was recycling or not. And I know now, we all know now that recycling is not the answer to all our problems, but that, at that time we weren't composting, it was. And I had already sort of known that that was the way things were gonna go. Um, so I had a very intentional environmental upbringing and that's very much thanks to my parents and all the things we did outside. Uh, we backcountry camp, we um, mountain bike, we hike. The environment has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. And after I realized that I was never gonna go to the Olympics, um, I needed to find another way to mark myself in the world. And I'm a very high achiever, I'm just gonna put that out there, and I can't just do like one little thing, I gotta do it all. Um, and I had a school project, um, which was, the question of a school project was, should single-use plastic bags and straws be banned in Cochrane? I was like, yes, of course, why not? Like, this is something super, super easy. And at that time, I had a, had a friend, Belle Levisky, who founded Seven Fins Forever, and she had gone to Cochrane Town Council and asked them to ban shark fin soup. And Cochrane Town Council was like, yes, of course, we can do that. Um, so I was like, okay, well, why don't I just go to Cochrane Town Council? I've done all this research for this project, and I can go tell them I want single-use plastic bags and straws to be banned in Cochrane. Um, and I started doing school visits. So I went into Glenbo and Fireside and Ranchview, all uh, K-8 to and elementary schools in Cochrane, and educated uh, mainly grade one to four students about how they could reduce their plastic intake and make more sustainable choices in their lives. Um, and that's how Lives With Less Plastic started. Now, I say Lives With Less Plastic, but it's also Lives With Less Plastic. So if anyone's confused on that, it's both. It's meant to be that way um, because that 
simple sentence has so many different meanings. And I wanted to inform the community, and I took a stand on plastics. So this is me in grade eight going to Cochrane Town Council. Um, and let me tell you, it was a lot of emotions. Um, a lot of work went into it. There were butterflies. It was a whole big thing. And before I went to Cochrane Town Council, I um, consulted very many members of the community. So I talked to the mayor. I talked to the council members. I talked to Fabrizio, who's the head of waste and recycling in uh, Cochrane. I talked to Half Hitch, No Frills, Fence and Post, all what they thought about, let's get rid of the plastic bags and let's get rid of the plastic plastic straws. Um, and everyone was very incredibly supportive. Um, and after I'd done all these school visits, I even had a couple grade four students come and watch me at council, which was honestly super amazing. Um, and then I went to Cochrane Town Council. I was a delegate, um, and I asked them to ban single-use plastic bags and single-use plastic straws in sit-down restaurants. At that time, I knew single-use plastic straws are something many people depend on every day, and I thought, let's just start with the sit-down restaurants, and then we can expand to everywhere, so the fast food restaurants. And my goal of this ask was, we have this one thing, and I'm gonna ask you to ban these things, but there are so many other single-use plastics that can be banned. And when I say single-use plastics, I mean something that's used once. So the straw you get at a fast food restaurant, the bag you use um, if you forget your groceries at a grocery store. Now, I know some of the people use these items twice or three times, and those bags, they were used as garbage bags and stuff, but they are still classified as single-use plastics, meaning to be used once and then thrown away. And all most of single-use plastics cannot be recycled. Plastic bag is too light to be recycled, up, um, and a plastic straw is too tiny and too lightweight to be recycled. So as you can see, we are using all these things that are just meant to be thrown away. So we needed to change that. And then after I did my presentation at Cochrane County Council, they took his information and took no further action at that time. And that was a letdown, let me tell you. Um, but it did push me to make change in another way. Um, I knew the town of Cochrane wasn't going to do anything. That's okay. But there are so many people in Cochrane that are willing to make change. So I was like, yeah, as long as I can connect with those people, I will be able to make that change. And then we sort of had to transition. I was not going to be able to make change through the town of Cochrane, through the municipality, and that was okay. Um, and the ban was not going to work for Cochrane. I sort of had to accept that and we had to move on. Um, so I transitioned from banning plastics as the main focus of Lives With Us Plastic to educating people about plastics and sustainability. When you educate one person, so if, suppose I'm going to a classroom, when you educate one kid in that classroom, they're gonna bring it home to their parents, they're gonna bring it home to their siblings, they're then gonna tell their grandparents. So that just creates such a ripple effect. Then the federal government announced that they were gonna ban single-use plastics. So I was like, oh great, now I don't have to do that one thing off my plate, now we can focus on the sustainability part and the environment instead. So, my first school project was working with the leadership uh, class at Midford Middle School, and we collected t-shirts from the community and school. And this is when the first ever Lizard's Less Plastic bag boring station was created. So, this is Reed and I at Two Pharmacy in Cochrane, and there's a bag boring station behind us. So pretty much, we got the school and community to donate us old t-shirts, it was okay if they had rips or stains in the armpits. It didn't really matter. They were things that people would never wear again and probably would just get thrown away. And we made them into t-shirt bags. And this is honestly such a simple project that everyone can do. You literally cut off the bottom, cut off the sleeves, cut off the collar, cut tiny strips in the bottom, tie them together, and you have a t-shirt bag. And they're incredibly durable. Um, my classmates and I did a test. We were able to fit like eight textbooks, heavy, heavy textbooks in this bag without it breaking. And then we just couldn't fit any more textbooks in there. But they're super durable. Like our t-shirts, the clothing we wear every day is incredibly durable. Most of it's meant to last. So these bags were just a simple solution that no one's gonna wear this clothing anymore, but it can still have a new use. And 
putting this Bagborn station in Cochrane in an area that was very accessible to everyone around made it so that people saw that little, little actions make a big difference. Instead of using that plastic bag, just using that t-shirt bag instead makes such difference. And the premise of a bag boring station is borrow a bag, return a bag. Now the boring a bag part works incredibly well. The returning the bag on the other hand doesn't work as well. But honestly, um, we're okay with that because if people aren't returning their bags, then they're using them at home. They're using them for other purposes. And we can always make more t-shirt bags. There's always gonna be t-shirts somewhere that someone is not using that is just gonna go into the landfill. So honestly, not a big issue. Um, yeah, all right. And then I started expanding. So to this point, Lose With Less Plastic is just me. So I am this grade nine student, COVID has just hit, and I am trying to run this environmental organization all by myself. And let me tell you, that's pretty hard. Um, so I started asking new people to join Lives With Less Plastic. I had known a pe couple people in the community that were also passionate about the environment, like me, and yes, they were going into university, but I thought that was fine, whatever, we wanna build our reach. Um, and we got two new members during COVID, and then we started having monthly meetings. Everything was going great. We held our first garbage cleanup. Um, this is from about an hour of collecting garbage. That's me and Zoe, one of our first ever group members. Um, we collected all this garbage in about an hour in the quarry area in Cochrane, so downtown Cochrane. And that's a lot of garbage for just like an hour of work and about 15 to 20 people. Our garbage cleanup wasn't that successful with people but we still collected a lot of garbage, so that was totally okay. <laughs> and we got motivated to do more activities. Um, more community projects means a lot more work, but everyone was willing to put that work in. We were then in involved with the Recycling in Alberta documentary. Um, this documentary features lots of different organizations all over Alberta doing sustainable things, um, like Plastic Free YYC. And honestly, this was a major boost, because um, I honestly really encourage you to check out this documentary. It's called The Creative System Recycling in Alberta. It's on YouTube, um, and it just informs Albertans specifically about what people in their community are doing about recycling. Because we know, now we have compost, but we still know recycling is not the answer to all our problems, especially with the current infrastructure we have right now. So when people get more informed, they're able to sort their recycling properly. They're able to make sure they're not wish cycling, so putting things in the recycling bin that they hope can get recycled even though they can't. It's honestly such a great, it was such a great platform for us to use and for everyone to see how powerful just little um, organizations all around Alberta are doing to make change. Expanding, we got some more people. Um, so we went from two people to five people. Now five people to many people is not a lot of people. You tell, tell someone you have five peoples in a group, people in a group, you're like, oh, you got five people. But for us, this is massive. We have five committed um, environmental citizens who are conscious about their environmental practices and want to make change in their community. And most of them are university students. One of them's going off to university next year. The other three are university students. They go to school all over Alberta, so it's incredibly powerful for them to learn what we do in Lives Plus Plastic, use these community projects, and then they can go share it, reach um, with all the other schools, which is super, super important. And this is just getting more people involved. Each of these people have families. They have uncles and cousins and aunts. They have grandparents. Like, just even being a part of this group creates such a larger impact. Um, then we won an Emerald Award. So an Emerald Award is pretty much um, from the Emerald Foundation of Alberta. So they're environmental awards for businesses and nonprofit organizations um, doing environmental work all over Alberta. And this was an amazing achievement. Us five had put in the work to do this um, and we won in the youth category. We got a grant, we were involved with the podcast, we were in another mini documentary. And honestly, it was an amazing opportunity to spread the work and opportunities Lives Less Plastic has to offer. And it empowers other people to make change. When people see Lives with Less Plastic now in that mini six minute documentary, they're like, oh, these are some little simple actions I can do to make such a big change.
And we were super honored to get this award. Even though it was a virtual, it was super amazing. And it's all about empowerment in the end. We are doing these things and showing other people that they can do them as well. So now we're in the current time. Um, it's been about four years. We've gone through almost like my entire life, um, <laughs> pretty much, with Lives With Us Plastic from a little child to starting it, and now we're in the present. So we um, are doing a Lives With Us Plastic Eco Squad. Um, so pretty much we're doing a pilot project right now at Glenbow School with our grade four students. And pretty much what we've given them is we've given them some ideas, some conversation starters, some meeting plans, and they are then taking these ideas all about the environment and making action in their own school. So they recent, I visited them on Tuesday, and they recently just did an Earth Week thing for their school. So they did an Earth Hour, they ran a scavenger hunt, they did a garbage cleanup, they made cards for classes that participated in it. And honestly, it was amazing to watch them uh, finally put it all together. They were making thank you cards. It was super awesome for their first ever project to be running something like an uh, Earth Week at their school. And... This is a way for us to now take, yes, there are five of us in the Lives With Us Plastic group, but we're all older. So when we're able to empower these younger students in Cochrane middle schools and elementary schools, it's then able for them to expand their reach. So we just announced that next year we are open for applications for more schools to join our eco squads. We are hoping for, uh, for grades um, eight and under to join these. Um, and they honestly are just such a good way for young students to find their voice in the environment and create change because they're super easy things like one of the topics is um create a posters about endangered animals another one's all about for forestry which one of our group members created so there's something for everyone and something for all students to be a part of we then expanded our t-shirt bag boring station. So this is Bonnie and I at Great Things in Store in Cochrane. Um, and they look a little different than when we originally did them pre-COVID, but the premise is still the same. Borrow a bag, return a bag. And I restocked it the other day, and let me tell you, people were using it. Now the bags weren't coming back again, but honestly, not a big issue. <laughs> um, the Bow Valley Leadership Crew at my school created a bunch of different bags. I made the rest of them and then we relaunched. I'm also, after today's conference, going to drop another one off at Cochrane Clothesline in Cochrane, um, as they have been donating all the t-shirts that we've been using to make these bags. The Cochrane Clothesline is a organization in Cochrane through the Cochrane Active Vets, and they get clothing donations from people, a lot of clothing donations from people. People just dump off, dump their clothing and then I see ya. Um, so they have tons of material that they are unable to sell. And she's been, Connie, a great uh, clothesline, has been able to give those t-shirts to us, which is super, super amazing because we're connecting so many different dots in the community. Um, and the, all these t-shirts cannot be sold. They're just, they're not at the quality needed to be sold so they can be made into bags, which is super awesome. So now that's a total of three bag boring stations. It's definitely been like a four year process, but we're, we're getting there. Um, okay. So, as we look to the future, what is the future for Lives With Us Plastic? Honestly, at this moment, I couldn't really tell you. Um, we're gonna continue to do t-shirt bag boring stations all over Cochrane. Um, the federal government has announced that they're hopefully gonna ban single use plastics now by the end of 2022. It was 2021, there was 2022. So hopefully that happens this year. And then we'll obviously be a part of the education aspect of that. Because many people in our community just don't know the impact plastic has on everything we do. We see it every day, um, but they don't know the impact it actually has on the environment. So some simple actions you can take to reduce your plastic intake are leaving reusable grocery bags in your car if you're going to drive to the grocery store instead of bike, which is obviously a better solution. Um, if you wanna leave those in your car, then you're never going to be at a grocery store and be like, oh, I don't have my reusable bags. And if that does ever happen to you, you can honestly just put all the things you bought back into your cart. I know it's a real pain. Put it all back into your cart, bring it out to your car, put each item individually into your car, and then bring it home and do that all over again. But you are eliminating those plastics. You can refuse straws. The most important thing is to rethink your actions, though. Because when you start with that simple step of rethinking, you are then 
taking a moment to think, do I actually need this plastic straw? Probably not. Do I actually need this plastic bag? Probably not. Um, even the rethinking part of, I'm gonna go buy a box of spaghetti, but I'm gonna buy it in a box instead of a bag because I know that a box of spaghetti will more easily be recycled than that flimsy piece of plastic that covers your spaghetti. So honestly, the six R's are what you wanna think about. It's not just reduce, reuse, recycle. It's repair, refuse, and rethink. So six R's that are super beneficial for everyone to use. And if I want you to take anything out of this presentation, it's that you can do anything. Any small action you make can make such a big change. With Lives With Us Plastic, it did start as that school project. And the environment was already a passion of mine, but it just excelled that passion and made it so that passion become, became, become a reality. Um, once you find your why, once you find your reason, your passion to create change, you can make anything possible. And small actions create a big change. I wanna end with this quote. It's just one straw said two million people. Only one, if everyone said that out of two million people, we'd have two million straws. But if everyone stopped to rethink and then refused that straw, that's two million less straws in your environment. So your actions are portrayed onto others. If you're gonna use a straw, other people are gonna use a straw. If you're not gonna use a straw, other people are not gonna use a straw. So your small actions can create such a big change. That's yeah. How about that? We'll, we'll open it up to questions, but I gotta say your parents gotta be mighty proud. <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, Robert from uh, Kindersley, Saskatchewan. Um, I, a few years ago, uh, went on a rotary friendship exchange to the Philippines, mm -hmm. and there we experienced, um, we went to Manila Harbor, and where the breakwater comes into the harbor, the floating plastics, mm -hmm come in and they actually form reclaimed land and the slums are built on this plastic. And they have stories of islands of floating plastics in the ocean mm -hmm. and, of, and of all the environmental things out there, I can totally stand behind your project. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. The great, I didn't mention this, but the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is actually twice the size of Alberta. So that's massive, and that's floating in between uh, North America and Asia, and that's just all plastic that we have discarded, right? So yes, totally. Plastic waste, especially in developing countries, is honestly such a big problem, and there just needs to be that education, that inf the infrastructure, the solutions put in place, because we can reduce our plastic intake. It is possible, so thanks. Patricia. Patricia Morgan here, uh, connected to Calgary Rotary West. Um, your passion and your why, when you mentioned why, Simon Sinek, please take that out into the world with you. And I want your opinion about us still purchasing, which makes my stomach churn, water bottles. Um. <laughs> Personally, I think it's pretty easy to bring your own reusable water bottle. I don't know, my reusable water bottle comes with me everywhere. It's just a part of who I am. Um, but again, that's a learned habit, right? So that's part about the rethink. Before I leave my house, I'm gonna grab that reusable water bottle I own, especially at our house. I know we own so many reusable water bottles. We seem to get them from everywhere. We just sort of collect them, right? So I'm sure lots of you guys have reusable water bottles at home, right? So yeah, just rethink, be like, ooh, or maybe just leave a reusable water bottle in your car. Just those little actions of starting, not being caught in the situation where you're super thirsty and need some water, those are just super beneficial. So just, yes, of course, the rethink before you um, go somewhere to bring that reusable water bottle. <laughs> I'm Donna Purcell. I'm with uh, Rotary Downtown Red Deer, and um, I love your passion. I'm really, really happy that you could not go to the Olympics. And what that made me think about <laughs> is that I would love, like we, I'm a lawyer, we help young entrepreneurs, and I'd be very interested in creating an environmental Olympics if there isn't one, because you, you, 
kids want to compete. <laughs> yeah. And I think the Environmental Olympics is something that we need now. Have you thought of something like that? Um, currently, I haven't, but honestly, that sounds like a super awesome idea. Yeah. We, we have to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My name's Bella, I'm from uh, Cochrane High, part of the Interact Club, and I just wanted to say that of anyone who could be representing the youths that are in this room, it's so fantastic that you're up there. I'm sure it's so nervous, or you're so nervous that there's so many people watching you, but um, you did really amazing. And I'm just wondering, you have so much enthusiasm, obviously, with this, um, on this subject. Are you planning on pursuing it more in your adulthood? I know you said you don't know where this is going for you, but are you at least sort of planning to pursue it maybe, I don't know. Yeah, for sure. Um, thank you, first of all. Um, I'm hoping to go into environmental science. Um, I'm going into grade 12 next year, so I still have a little bit of a year, but hoping to go into environmental science and honestly just see where that leads me. Honestly, a goal of Lives With Less Plastic in general is us for to continue to educate people, to start um, educating younger students at a young age, those eco squads, to continue to change people's habits. Um, so we're hoping to get more people. There's always a recruitment form open on our website if anyone is interested. Um, but yeah, so we're just hoping to get more people, continue to follow what we want to do, and honestly, who knows what's going to happen in the next few years. <laughs> Yeah, and we, um, we love to volunteer, so like, if ever you need help, I know you said you're reaching out next year mostly to younger kids, but um, just for like a couple one-off on the weekends, um, we're happy to help. We would love to, so thank uh, you so much. Here, here. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jade, uh, you filled all of our hearts. Uh, I think that you are yet another example of youth who are showing tremendous accountability and ownership. And, uh, you know, we often, certainly us with gray hair, get skeptical of the youth and where the world's going. And, you know, not only what did we do to the world to mess it all up for them, but are they going to do anything with the world going forward? And, you know, you're going to do amazing things. And I know you said you might want to go into environmental uh, services uh, or understanding the environment better from an environmental science degree. I also saw in your bio that may be into medicine and work with the effects of microplastics in the body. I think no matter what you choose, you are going to be hugely successful with that passion. The shelter box donation on behalf of Jade was sponsored by the Rotary Club of Calgary North.